morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. It was a gift to pray with you as we begin our prayers together huh? on page nine of your leaf, dear friend. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. When his thoughts are our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. sets in order all things, both in heaven and earth. Put away from us, we entreat you, all hurtful things, and give us those things which are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, through the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we share in Scripture with them. book of Deuteronomy. Keep the Sabbath day and treat it as holy, exactly as the Lord your God commanded. Six days you may work and do all your tasks, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Don't do any work on it, not you, your sons or daughters, your male or female servants, your oxen or donkeys, or any of your animals or the immigrant who is living among you, so that your male and female servants can rest just like you. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, but the Lord, your God, brought you out of there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That's why the Lord, your God, commands you to keep the Sabbath day. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
all sent the letter to the Corinthians. We don't preach about ourselves. Instead, we preach about Jesus Christ as Lord, and we describe ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. God said that light should shine out of the darkness. He is the same one who shone in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay pots so that the awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come from us. We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we aren't crushed. We are confused, but we aren't depressed. We are knocked down, but we're not knocked out. We always carry Jesus' death around in our bodies so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies. We who are alive are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake, so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies that are dying. So death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. One Sabbath, Jesus was going to the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees saw him, said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food, he entered the house of God. When Abiathar was high priest and at the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and he gave some to his companions. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the human one is law even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him 
to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of one, Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends. Please be seated as we bite into the gift of the themes that mark all the scriptures, the psalm, the gospel, the gift of a day set apart for rest, worship, and rejuvenation. A time to reconnect with God, with ourselves and our community. And so let's bite into our scripture together. And as we allow it to unfold, uh, pay attention to what comes up for you. Uh, and feel free to always share that with me later this week. Deuteronomy, remembering liberation and rest. Deuteronomy takes us back to the ancient Israelite journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. A rich story, a rich history, and divine intervention. Moses affirms the importance of the Sabbath, a commandment meant to remind the ancient Israelites of their liberation. The Sabbath day is a rest for everyone. Everyone. It's not merely just a break from work, but a profound act of remembrance and gratitude that part of uh, what we'll do at the end of this reflection is instead of having the summary of our faith, the Nicene Creed, we will share in our general thanksgiving and prayer of deep gratitude. God rested on the seventh day after creation again. Don't get bogged down in, in the day, friends, because again, it depends on your point of view. A quick snippet before I continue. Uh, imagine this being uh, the primordial seed, the Big Bang, right? Again, it depends on your point of view. Don't break anything. <laughs> so according to science, according to our brilliant minds if this is the Big Bang, the primordial seed originally discovered by Father George Lemaitre, then you know, further unpacked by wonderful Albert Einstein. So if this is the primordial seed, if we are standing here, sorry that I'm out of frame online, in an expanding universe that's 14.9 billion years, give or take. And then if you're standing here and you're looking that way, we take this number, apparently, and you divide it by the cosmological constant, which is the number that allows everything to be equal. Otherwise, you would, if you have a big explosion, if the number's not right, everything explodes, it's too hot. If the number's not right, you have a black hole. Okay, you still with me? Again, this is very rich, it's very important because it's not 24 hours. It depends on your point of view. So here we are, take that 14.9 million years, you divide it by the cosmological constant. If you're standing on this side, that number is 6.9. So is a day 24 hours? Or is a day more or less 3 billion years? Depends on your point of view. And the person or the being that is outside of time and space is an immaterial being, is the ultimate expression of love. That being I call God, so I wonder, some might say it's quantum fluctuations, I say God. So that's a day. But that was just for you, you know, next time you have a yogurt somewhere or a smoothie and somebody says, the days of creation, no, it depends on your point of view. What do you understand by day? 
back to the real invitation of being reminded of what we made for. God rests on the seventh day. We are called to rest. Acknowledging that, I, I, that we are more than what we do. And in this rest we are recalled how God invites me. I dare say delivers me from my to-do list. From my stress, from my relentless pursuit of productivity and success. Oh, and then Psalm 81 helps me step back into this invitation. What we do every Sunday, you don't get to do this in many other places. Do what? Stand, sit, pray, sing, say peace be with you, share in a divine supper that transcends time, uh, that reminds you to do this to remember me. Where else are you going to do that? I don't think there are many other places you can do that. Intergenerational. And Psalm 81 says, thank you choir, sing a, a song of joy. Sing a song for joy to God for your strength. Shout aloud to the God of Jacob. Lift up your voices in praise. And you really get to hear that if you come early when the choir is rehearsing. The psalm recounts the deliverance too from bondage. An invitation to trust this immaterial being's provision to life. This, this worship with your whole heart to find rest in this immaterial being's presence in the stillness of the Sabbath when you create margin in your life, space in your life, how do you then perhaps, can you perhaps, might you perhaps hear the voice of God? And then of course Paul sometimes really makes me cranky, uh, but he writes this poetic uh, writing to the community in Corinth, the second letter of Paul, this rich tapestry, theological insights and actual practical advice. The paradox of the spiritual journey, the paradox of following Jesus, carrying the treasure of the gospel in jars of clay. We are fragile. Our bodies break. Yet within you, within me, within us, resides the power of God. I dare say the power of the universe. And our human frailty contrasts that with divine strength we carry. A reminder that your rest, my rest, our rest and renewal comes from that which is beyond ourselves. Not our efforts. What an invitation to embrace my vulnerability. What an invitation uh, to allow God to make perfect my vulnerability. God's power. And then Mark's gospel is hard for me because there's very few passages where I hear Jesus is really cranky at the clergy. And it's hard to hear that. Gospel of Mark, Jesus challenges the Pharisees' rigid interpretation of Sabbath. And it's providential that we hear that today, especially as our church moves to general convention, the way we make decisions of the church as we wrangle with who our baptism, communion, who decides. And then Jesus goes for a walk through the grain fields on the Sabbath, picking up heads of grain. You can almost hear the clergy immediately, oh, we got you, oh, we got him. The Sabbath. And then Jesus heals a man. The spirit of the Lord is, is to promote life in all that we do. At St. Mary's and any spiritual gathering, friends, how is it promoting your well-being, your connection with your neighbor, with God, with yourself? 
but those who have gone before you. How wonderful that Jesus and Jesus' actions reminds me, you, us, the Sabbath, I wonder, it's not just about a, a legalistic observance, but an embracing of the gift of rest and renewal God has given you and me. And this is valuable, especially as we eventually, when the sun does come out, uh, please may it be this week, my Lord, um, we are stepping into the season of ordinary time. And I think we, we underestimate the beauty, uh, the value, because it's a season that can seem lengthy and green and blah and uh, boring and because uh, we can't wait to get to Advent and the high feasts that we do. But I think uh, there's an embracing of stillness and presence during this season, a period overlooked because it's nestled between the high points of our liturgical calendar. But in the stillness, I think truly love and holy joy emerges even more. Anthony de Mello, a, a wonderful writer, Jesuit priest, spiritual teacher, often emphasized about awareness and presence, of finding God in the ordinary moments of life. What a wonderful challenge for me. And I mean me and you and us. When I'm stuck for 45 minutes at that lights that just don't seem to be synchronized as I try to turn right onto PC. Especially, although I get to see the artwork and see everybody sitting on the balcony, and it's wonderful to see everybody getting their pizza slice if you're familiar with downtown. But I wonder, this week for you, friends, this day perhaps, or any time as we take the journey together through this ordinary time, I imagine, if you will, I wonder what day would you pick to actually truly let go of your to-do list, my to-do list, and stop to breathe, to listen, and to simply be, where the only task is to enjoy the presence of God and the company of those who love. One of my favorite books that I've I've ended up biting into this book several different times in several different ways. Dr. Sandra Dalton Smith, uh, uh, an internal medicine physician and a work life integration researcher. She identifies seven types of rest. Number one, physical rest, passive rest. Oh, deep napping. Active rest, some, some yoga, some stretching, massage therapy, about letting our bodies recover and heal. That's number one. Number two, mental rest. Giving the mind a chance to slow down and recover from that joy of overthinking, constant thinking, uh, constant processing, or maybe that's just me. It's essential for mental clarity and peace. Mental rest. Number three, sensory rest. What is reducing uh, sensory input look like? And I guess since Arsenal, my soccer team, has reached the end of its season, I don't have to have the TV on late at night with the time difference. So, so uh, you know, I have to work on that because I'm still very much a Formula One fan, so I know the next race is coming up. But sensory rest, finding calm in a world that is often too loud and too bright. This one is interesting, number four. Creative rest. Allowing oneself to appreciate and engage with the beauty in nature and art, which can inspire and rejuvenate, but it's about feeding our souls with wonder and awe. Number five, emotional rest. 
being authentic and expressing one's true feelings, being free from people-pleasing and emotional labor, being real and vulnerable without masks. That feels like a lot of work, so that's an interesting invitation. Number six, almost there, social rest. Balancing relationships that revive with those that drain. Spending time with supportive and positive people. Surrounding ourselves with those who uplift and energize us. And then the final one, spiritual rest. Engaging in practices that foster a deep sense of belonging, a sense of love, a sense of acceptance. A sense of purpose, such as prayer, and being and singing in community, connecting with the divine and finding our place in the grand scheme of things. These types of rest, how wonderful that they, uh, different areas of exhaustion help uh, us achieve or move towards a, a maybe better rhythm of living a fulfilled life. How can we incorporate some of these in this ordinary time, this ordinary season of our community? St. Mary's, my hope and prayer is that we will continue to be a haven of rest and renewal. Sundays, we come together during the week, first Thursdays we have to say, and then our Bible studies during the week. But it is through praying and singing together on these glorious Sundays, these Sabbaths, that nurture our connection, where we can create an environment where everyone feels my hope at home, where you can lay down your burdens just for a little bit, at least for just, you know, at least 90 minutes, and find solace in God's presence and in each other's company. So in all this resting and Sabbath language that the, the, the scripture invites us to, it made me wonder this whole week, uh, and I wonder for you, where do you truly feel at home? Where are you completely free? Where do you feel protected? Where do you feel safe? Where do you feel home? in your life, in my life. The gift of St. Mary's is that that can be a little piece, hopefully, of home for you, friends. It can be a sanctuary of rest, of renewal, of sitting in the light of God. And so, as we, we, we leave here today, after we share this wonderful meal and some more songs, I invite you, carry the spirit of Sabbath with you. Embrace the divine gift of, of rest and renewal, remembering God's deliverance and, and celebrating God's faithfulness. And may we find our stillness the love and joy that God so freely offers. So uh, let us embrace the fresh, the gift of the Sabbath. Covenant with yourself to make margin this week. Make space for rest and renewal in your life, in my life. And to cherish these moments of, of stillness and presence. And may our community at St. Mary's be a place where, where our souls find true home, at least for the Sundays of the year. To that I say.
invite you to stand as you are able, dear friends, as we share the general thanksgiving on page 14 of our leaflet. Except, O Lord, I thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of life. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which you are in us and in this life. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, leading us to accomplishments that satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, and for the truth of his word, and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience, by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which, which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. And grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know of Christ. Make him known, and through him, at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us now pray for the church and for the world. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, John, our bishop, all clergy and their families, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for Iglesia Alexandra de la Region de Central de America. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And there is your name forever and ever. For those in our community who need our prayers, especially. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. O Lord God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. People of the way. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Boldly greet each other in peace with some hooks, <laughs> buddy. Thank you. 
Peace, ladies. Blessings, blessings and strength to you, dear friends. Um, a gift to pray with you, a gift to share this meal with you. Thank you also for your flexibility and your compassion. Uh, and we will not be having coffee hour today because immediately following the service, we will have a memorial for uh, uh, Sebastian Acosta. They had attended Easter and were journeying with us and he tragically died in a car accident last week. And so it's always challenging to have a memorial. He was a mere 25 years old. And so uh, thank you again for your, for, for your flexibility as we gather immediately afterwards. We have announcements, evidence that the Holy Spirit is moving in this church. Good morning. This Thursday at 7 p.m. is our Tizé service in the bulletin. And it's a great time to rest and reflect mm -hmm. and meditate and sing. So I hope I hope you come. We're we're going to try to stream it online too. That's the plan. Okay. Got it. Episcopal Church women, please see them. Good morning, it's Christina again, and I am here to tell you that. It's June, and it may be gloomy, but it's not going to be gloomy at all on June 15th when we have our first concert, which is going to be out, as you know, on our Ocean View Terrace. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's a new person that we've never had before, but he's got a fantastic reputation, and his music is going to be wonderful. Of course, we have wonderful food from Neuters, and we have lots of um, beverages, shall we say, beverages. <laughs> so please join us, and please remember that it is a fundraiser. We are raising funds for our community. So we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you, Easy Go. Tunes community chorus. There are cards. There are some on the table in the narthex, so pick one up on your way out if you like. Um, we're having a concert next Sunday afternoon at four o'clock at the high school. It's free. Um, for those of you who don't know about the Luna Tunes community chorus, um, several members of our St. Mary's choir sing in it, and it's directed by our own amazing and infinitely patient Bob Nunn. Hey. Um, uh, the title of the, sh of the show this year is Show Tunes. Oh. And that's because it's composed entirely of music from shows. Tunes from shows, thus show tunes. Some are Broadway musicals and some are movies, but they're all fun. And uh, the high point of the show, uh, one of the high points of the show, is a big Broadway group dance number to one of the songs from the movie Grease. Oh. Now, I will tell you that in this dance number, there are two pretty faces you will recognize from St. Mary's. I won't tell you who they are, but I will tell you who they are not. 
They are not Tom and Jay. <laughs> but if you want to know who they are, you have to come to the concert. So next Sunday, 4 o'clock. See you there. Wonderful. Yes. And I do invite you to get there early because otherwise, like me, you'll be standing at the door. Because it gets packed and it's wonderful to see it there. Uh, birthdays, Thanksgivings, anniversaries, I see some movement. Thanks for the gift of birthdays. I give you thanks for these your faithful disciples and you call thy name to be your beloved and your presence in us in your names. Hold them as the apple of your eye and hide them in the shadow of your wings as you strengthen them for another year of hope, for another year of love, for another year of joy. And may you envelop them with your blessing and may you fold their homes with your holy love. For this we lift up in the name of Jesus, because I know you will never come to your way. Amen. to share and bless you, to share on this Sabbath, this most divine supper with you, dear friends. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and our labor to the Lord. All right, choir.
spirit of this meal of thanksgiving. The altar flowers given to the glory of God from Laura Kennedy, in memory of her mother Joyce and their aunt Sunny, who both passed last year. They are missed and loved. Continue on page 16 of your leaflet with thanks. God be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, even by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God, and living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread without cast and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. When the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life, and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine and again, he gave thanks to you and gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is Christ is Christ is Gathered at the table of God of all creation, remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Saint Mary, the God-bearer, and all your saints from every tribe, every language, every people, every nation, to feast and banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. With Christ, and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as the Savior Christ has taught us, in the language of your heart, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven,
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Alleluia, alleluia.
invite you to stand as you are able, dear friends, as we share the post communion prayer on page 19. Of the Let us pray. Eternal God, whoever in you are, your gracious be accepted us as the living of your sons, the Savior Jesus Christ. Your perfection is spread your food and sacrament to the cause of you. Send us all out of the glory and peace. You are in the strength of your courage, the love of us to serve you, and the lightness and singleness of our heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, Trust your life to the Lord of the open spaces and the time of adventure, to the life that pulses through rain-drenched streets and mountain heights, to the love that sustains us through feast and famine, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remain with you and those whom you love always. Amen. Now we sing. <laughs>
Downstairs. Now, there's a way to get there. And I have to help you. You go out to the street, go down to the lower parking lot, the yeah. of the church, yeah. and you see that there's a sidewalk on the side of the church. I'm going to go on the yeah. door now. And that will let you in for the restaurant. Yeah. By the way, the other restaurant is going to be parked. So this is the easy way. Do you have any stuff on the hill or do you have Excellent. Yeah. Let me go downstairs and unlock that door. Okay. 
And then we'll just have to ask you to make sure the door is shut. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we put it in front. Are we going to put flowers in the front? Or like around here? Yeah, what I was going to do is one of those, uh, the other one I was going to put in front here. Uh, yeah. And then the big one, we can put, do you have flowers in the kill pool? Not yet. So maybe the big one can go, well, we can have the big one here as well, and then we can move these flowers to the big one. Does that work? Yes. Where's uh, Isabella sitting? Um, oh, she should be coming. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. The big box big is not here. Thank you. Thank you. Let me stop the stream and then start again.